uh, let me say thank you uh, uh, for this opportunity to all of those that are on this call, for those that, uh, uh, for Village Connect and the work that they're doing in the community and for the community, and certainly to um, all of you that are so active in this community. Uh, I am born and raised uh, a product of Oakland. Um, uh, had a, a, the fortunate opportunity to be able to, to uh, go many places, but love to come back home always. Uh, when I think about this, this topic, uh, major lessons of manhood that are not taught to our black boys, I think I, I have a litany of them. And, 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 and so I'm going, I, I, let me just, by way of full disclosure, I'm a pastor. I pastor a church in East Oakland. And so the things that I'm going to talk about are going to be both natural and spiritual. I think that they go hand in hand and they go together. And so when we begin to talk about, when we begin to talk about the, 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 the major lessons, um, whether these are major or minor, I, I, I lump them all together in, 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 in what we, uh, what the community needs to do better relative to training up our, 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 our young men. Um, for, first of all, I, I wanna, I, in no particular order, I'm just going through First of all, I think that I think that what we have to really teach our young men is how to respect women. I think that I, I think that we have to, it, it, you know, they respect mom and they and they respect folks in their in their in their immediate. Uh, uh, but we we need we need to make sure that men are respecting women, and I know that you know we we use those proverbial uh, uh, names that we call women um, out of the, calling them out of their name. Not you know that's a cultural thing, but I think that I, I think that when we allow that and when women accept that, then it just bleeds over into more. So respect for women is absolutely critical. It, it, but it, it's more than just the name. It's more than just what we call them. It's more than just how we address them. I think it's in it, it's in how that how we interact with them. It's in how we treat them. It's in our relationships with them. Um, uh, it, I don't need to tell you. We know what the what the what the statistics show relative to relative to the divorce rate. Um, we, we know the statistics relative to uh, uh, um, uh, absentee fathers. Um, and so it, it, when I talk about respect of women, I'm talking about respect of women in a broad sense and not just, and not just how we address them. Um, uh, the, 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 the next thing I'll talk about is, is, is really just teaching our boys you know, proper, uh, proper language. That you know, we need to we need to teach them and make sure that they understand what it means to 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 talk uh, and, and have proper language. And 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 there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with the dozens. There's nothing wrong with 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 the with the, with the conversations we have on the on on the on the on the playground or in the on on the basketball uh, court or or on the football field. But then what happens many times is is that same language that's on there ends up in, 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 on jobs and ends up in places that it doesn't belong. So again, I think we just need, we're teaching folks, uh, you know, how, we, how we ought to be addressing each other, how we should be, how we should be interacting with each other and, 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 and caring and having proper language. I, I'm not talking, I'm really not talking about, you know, uh, 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 whether or not we have to go to an English class or whether we have to, you know, we have to speak properly and all of that. I, I'm amazed at how many times, and some of you have heard this, how many times we be talking to somebody and how there's, how surprised they are to hear how well you speak. And, and they'll say something like, well, you speak so well. Well, what do you expect? Right. <laughs> um, and, and so again, I think it, it's just making sure that we are teaching our young men uh, uh, how to how to have proper language, how to how to interact with folks at all levels at all levels. Um, I think that we need to teach we need to teach uh, uh, our men compassion. Our young men needs to, we need to learn compassion. And, and when we talk about and I'm going to lump I'm going to lump compassion and sensitivity together. Uh, and and you know we we think we, you know we talk about talk to men. And talk to men about compassion and sensitivity. You know, the first thing you want to think about is you're being too soft, and 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 uh, uh, that ain't no man. And you got to beat your chest, and you got to stick your chest out, and all of that. I got it. All, all, I understand all that. 
but but we have to teach men and our young boys how to be compassionate and sensitive compassionate to other individuals what what does that mean you know just have just be caring and just be helpful and just be making sure that we're we we are we are our brother's keeper and make sure that we're doing the things that we need to do in the neighborhood in the community in, in wherever we are to make sure that we are that, that, that we're not just allowing things to go by and we're not just allowing things to happen and that we, and that we jump into things, but we're compassionate. We, we, we feel the pain. We, we feel what's going on. We, we're not only experiencing, you know, we may not be experiencing exa exactly what everybody else is experiencing, but we feel what they feel. And so that's really what compassion is. And then sensitivity, you know, sensi one, being one sensitive minute, to brother, those kind of things and being touched by those things. All right, being touched by those things, and the, and then finally, um, there, there's four things that we know that we do with, with in, in in our church. Um, we help people to know God. I think that we need to help our young men to know God. Seventy percent of the church is filled with women, thirty percent with men. We need to help men find freedom. Young men find freedom, find freedom from their past and their hurts and their habits and their hangups, so that they can discover their purpose. Who, why they are here, why, why are they still on the earth, so that they can ultimately make a difference. Make a difference not just in their own lives, but make a difference in someone else's life, in the communities that we all live, work, and worship. Thank you. Brother Gaylor, um, I'm, I'm honored uh, to even be, uh, to share the space with you brothers. Um, for me, I believe, you know, taking responsibility is something that uh, as a child, I, I, I grew up uh, in an absent father home as, and, and I was an absent father. So um, a lot of times, you know, uh, my mom would make excuses for, you know, a lot of my shortcomings or, you know, my, my bad attitudes and these, that and the other. So she never really uh, instilled accountability uh, with responsibility comes accountability. Uh, and then true manhood, I believe, takes responsibility for its actions, choices, values, and beliefs. And while taking responsibility, manhood is also willing to admit with grace when it is wrong. I didn't, I didn't have that. I didn't have that understanding. You know, uh, I was wrong. Even, I was right when I was wrong. And even when I knew I was wrong, I still was right. You know, my value system was, was uh, real uh, twisted. And so I, I, in, in speaking on responsibility, I think the one thing that Black boys need to be taught, and not just taught and told, uh, uh, role modeled, uh, uh, good values, a good positive value system. Um, I think we all come out the house and off the porch, you know, with, with uh, uh, knowing right from wrong. I believe the value system, the, or the perspective, the perception, excuse me, of what right is wrong, what right, what is right, and what is wrong, is determined by your your, your value system, right, and and or your understanding of of that. And I used to think that, you know, the uh, dealing drugs and poison in my community, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, uh, ill-gotten gains was, you know, the, the only way. Uh, and, and so if it was the only way, it had to be the right way. I, I didn't have, you know, a, a village. I wasn't part of a village that it took to raise a child, you know what I'm saying? At, at a young age, 13 years old, I was raising myself, you know, and, and understanding, you know, only what a child knows. A child will be with only what he knows or any, any individual. Um, also, I, I believe uh, we need to teach uh, young men, uh, young boys, excuse me, uh, not to be afraid to be vulnerable. You know, real strength allows other people in, and manhood is honest about feelings and not afraid to be, uh, to be known. True manhood never builds a wall where there should be a window or fortress where there should be a sanctuary. I, I, um, you know, boy, don't cry, suck it up. You know, those types of things. And I think when we tell youth that or when we, when we create that environment, that, that living environment, we're teaching them to, to, to stuff the feelings. And, and with that being said, you know, we, over the years, we don't have them stuff so many feelings to where when it's time to let that out, you know, we ain't going to know how to act. And we really don't want that smoke uh, of, of these, uh, uh, the fire that comes with this dysfunctional stuffed feelings. Um, and that's how I grew up. I grew up, you know, I was very uh, aggressive because I was told, you know, that's what that's what a real dude do. You know, you got to, you know, you smaller. And I, I kind of grew up with this little chicken hawk attitude or mentality as, as well, you know. Uh, uh, but I, it was it was so dysfunctional. I stood in my way, and I see a lot of youth that I outreach to, uh, as well as fathers, you know, really don't have an understanding of what it is to be a black man 
who is responsible for the life of another. I don't think that we understand our role and how significant it is in the proper growth and development of our babies. Um, so I think that that's something that should be taught to our boys. You know, uh, not just that your life matters when it comes to, you know, being pulled up by the police, but how your life matters before the life that you create matters. And with that being said, a, a proper value system, just a little history of me. I got seven kids, but I mean, eight kids, excuse me, by seven different women. With that being said, that just speaks to my value system, how I came out the house and off the porch. And with that being said, my children are being raised in different households. So if any point in time that it was, you know, for me to get it right, I had a whole bunch of to go gather and get my people next to me and, 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 and pull off all these layers of, of dysfunction with my babies because uh, I didn't understand the value, you know, why my black lives matter in the way that it should oppose the way that other folks, I basically I played into the stereotype and the negative narratives of what black is. So, and that, again, so that's what I think what, what uh, young black boys should be taught is, you know, what is black identity? And I think we need, we, I think once that we, at least me, I thought black, I thought black was black. Well, I'm, I'm, of, I'm of a dark skin, so I'm black. But I had, after trial and error and transformation, I find out that it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing. It's a being. It's an, it's, it's an experience. Uh, and it really has no color to it. Um, and I think that uh, black boys should be taught that black is not color. Black is a certain way of existing, uh, uh, a certain way of, of persevering, a certain way of standing up against all odds and still winning. Um, I think that we, uh, so too many times, we give our black, uh, uh, our black boys a whole bunch to follow and ain't none of it really that good. And I think that we- One minute. I think we need to be mindful of, of proper, you know, role modeling, living it out. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, you know, mostly all the times, they ain't, they ain't paying attention to our walk. They paying, I mean, they're not paying attention to our talk. They're paying attention to our walk. How are, we, how are we really exemplifying and role modeling and things that we trying to tell these black boys that they shouldn't be doing? Um, a lot of times, like with me, you know, I used to talk out of both sides of my mouth, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm dealing drugs in front of them, but I'm telling this future star athlete, hey man, don't you do this, you know? Or I'm, or I'm driving down the street smoking weed in my car with my son, but telling him don't do this, you know? Uh, so I think uh, we need to show them integrity, the integrity of manhood, I think that's important to teach black boys in this day and age. Because, uh, and, and again, that sense of that, um, when the when, uh, pastor spoke about sensitivity, it relate, I related it to, you know, uh, uh, it being all right to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and self-aware. I think that's another thing that needs to be taught mm -hmm. to black <clears throat> With that being said, thank you for allowing me to speak. I have a unique experience in terms of uh, many black boys. I, um, I think I've spent more time with you and uh, uh, Galen and Gary. I've spent more time with you than I spent with my father. I think if uh, we added up all the time that I spent with him, it would not add up to a half a day. But I didn't miss him and didn't know that I should because there were so many men in my family that stepped up and cared about me. I tell people that I'm a combination of the uh, men and women who cared enough about me and had confidence in me to uh, push me along, help me along, prod me, correct me when I made mistakes, and uh, and all of those sort of things. You know, I dress like I dress like one of my uncles who uh, when, I'm, when I dress up, I dress like like my uncle Herman, and when I'm working on a car, I dress like my uncle Gus. And when I'm in a fight, I, 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 I fight like my Uncle Carl. And uh, I teach like Dr. Walter Cooper out of Rochester, New York, who uh, spent a lot of time with us, teaching us. And so, like I say, I've had a lot of men and women who have mentored me. And so my goal is giving back. They made me realize that it was important to give back. And the things that some basic things that we don't teach young black boys. One of the things is that we, we need to teach mastery. First thing you do is master the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. 
it's all arithmetic, but if you make it rhyme, it's arithmetic. But and the reason I say that is because sometimes the communication problems, and then I'm sure that you realize this working with young, young men, uh, a part of the problem is that they haven't mastered the language. They haven't mastered, uh, you know, uh, the whole art of communicating. And we need to teach mastery and, and to not be ashamed to speak. You know, we talk about code switching. Uh, I'm at home, you know, if, if it's on the corner, in the club, on the bar, or in the courtroom. Because I, I know about code switching. I know about the proper language to use in, in those circumstances. I think that's important. I think that we need to teach. You know, one of the brothers mentioned vulnerability. Uh, being teachable is, you know, sometimes uh, when you are afraid, what you do is you render yourself untrainable and unteachable because you have so many guards up, you know, and because you're guarding your vulnerability that you can't absorb and you can't learn the lessons that you need to learn. Uh, there's some important lessons that we should get into sometimes. Just spend, we could spend a whole evening talking about George Washington Carver and his, uh, and his contributions, but also about his, his uh, standard, his way of life, his, his thoughts on life. Um, the other thing is that, and this is important, all of us need this, Dylan mentioned it, um, R-A-P, and I'm not talking about the way you sing, I'm talking about R-A-P, R, recognition, A, appreciation, P, and praise. All of us need it. And we ought to spend more time giving it because what we would do if we do that, we will instill in youngsters uh, a sense that they, because people, you know, a kid who acts out and gets the reward of attention will continue to act out because he gets rewarded for that. A kid who achieves, you know, we need to, we need to, that's why we need to set benchmarks. I have a, I have written goals. We need to teach youngsters to have written goals. And, uh, and there's a certain joy that comes when you get it ready, when you are able to cross one of them off and say, wow, I did that. You don't have to even tell anybody. It just helps your spirit. See, we all, we need to talk about, you know, the, the pastor talked about spirit. See, we are, in my view, a spiritual being having a physical experience. You know, that, that's the way I view it. Uh, and so we, when we're talking about the thing, rap, make sure that the people around you are getting it because all of us need it. Recognition, appreciation, and praise. Uh, there was an organization in the mission area over in San Francisco that was called Rap. Uh, Jim Queen was the founder of the organization. I always give him credit for uh, laying that on me because when One he minute. said rap, One minute, Brother Brown. Okay. Uh, when he said rap, the music hadn't started yet. We didn't, you know, they weren't rapping. Um, but I learned that Cap Calloway and some of the other people were rapping all the time. We just didn't call it that. But the main thing that I want to do is that we need to teach our young men to be responsible and to be proud of themselves, but to be proud of themselves in a good way and to lay out goals. You know, uh, George Russell Carver say, you know, be too, you know, be, be too proud to lie. You know, and uh, there, there's so many other things that he laid on people. But I'll leave you with this as a, as a goal. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better 